International Rugby back this weekend, folks. Rugby World Cup warm-up games. The reverse fixture from last week's game sees England hosting Wales and looking for a wee bit of revenge after kind of disappointing. But we will go through the squads, the recent results, one of which is, as I said, very recent. Some stats, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. So, um, yeah, there are two teams in very different positions because England have named their squad for the Rugby World Cup. So there's that kind of added bit of security for some of these England players, but also, you know, it's a desire. It's a 33-man squad, so you still want to keep yourself within that starting 15 or within that kind of wider 23-man squad if you're the England players. And uh, for Wales, well, they've just changed the whole bloody team, so it's a chance for, for other guys to get a go. Uh, we will start with the English because they are at home. And uh, it's a home venue where they don't lose to Wales very often. I think it's 2015, painfully for England, the last time they lost at home to Wales. The recent record is 3-2 to two in England's favour. But um, as I said, last week was 20 points to 9 to Wales. So that's why I think there's a wee bit of a revenge factor and um, a desire to take things up a notch. But um, Marla, George and Stewart, those are three guys Going to the Rugby World Cup, so Marla returns to the starting 15 after being outside the 23 for last week. Likewise, Jamie George. Uh, Will Stewart continues on at tight head. Maro Atoje is also back into the 23. He has been an absolute stalwart for England the last few years, and he um, his appearance in the squad is just, I don't know, man. Like As much as they've got other good locks in England, he just brings that something uh, you know, different factor to his game. His defensive game, his ability to turn the ball over, to pinch line out ball, is really just quite exceptional. And uh, George Martin continues alongside him, but good to see Mara back. And then it's an all-new back row with Laws, Earl, and Vinnie Polo. There's a kind of nice balance to that back row, with, you know, Laws also having that big defensive game and his ability at line out time, Ben Earl with his work rate, and apparently it's his first ever start for England, which I found bizarre. Uh, and then big Billy V with his big ball carries. They all bring something to that back row. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty tidy looking four pack. Still missing a few names, but yeah, you'd be pretty happy with that. I think if you're an England fan, Van Portfleet uh, up from the bench this week to start at number nine in place of Danny Kerr, and Owen Farrell is back into the twenty three this time at ten rather than twelve. Twelve is filled by Ollie Lawrence. I love having Ollie Lawrence in the midfield. Honestly, he is just such a fun guy to watch. What a big ball carrier he is. Um, yeah, his game's just gone up another level, I think, in the last kind of 12 months or so. And then marching continues on at 13. Is he the guy who's going to be 13 playing for England at the World Cup? Seems like it at the moment. And then uh, new wings with Elliot Daly on the left wing, the veteran, and then the youngster on the other wing, Henry Arundel, on the right wing. That guy is lightning. So we obviously look forward to seeing that guy in some space. Maybe not so much if you're a Wales fan, but that guy is a very fun guy to watch. And then... Uh, speaking of kind of regulars, Freddie Stewart at fullback has um, basically become, is he the first name off the team sheet? He's one of them. And they don't switch up fullback very often um, since Freddie Stewart's kind of come onto the scene. The replacements, Theo Dan is still there as replacement hooker. Genge drops to the bench. And I think they said he's going to get his 50th England cap, so congratulations to him. Another veteran in Dan Cole comes in on the bench. Johnny Hill, who's outside the World Cup squad, is there. And then Jack Willis is in. Ben Youngs is in, and then uh, George Ford keeps his spot on the bench alongside Max Mellons, who, Max Mellons, who drops down. Um, they tried to ask Steve Borthwick about whether he believes that line that England were kind of uh, losing the fitness battle against Wales last week. He didn't really answer the question. He basically said he's happy with where they're at. They've got a great strength and conditioning coach, and um, he'll be pretty sure that they'll be peaking uh, at the right time so they may not have hit their peak just yet for Wales as I mentioned it's pretty much a different team there are very few guys in this side who played last week and there's a couple of guys getting their first Wales caps just like last week so Gareth Thomas Dewey Lake and Thomas Francis that is the new front row so it's a more experienced front row than last week with uh, Francis and Thomas as your two props compared to the two debutants last week. And then Dewey Lake, this must be his first time captaining well, so a big congratulations to him. But as I said, all new front row. Uh, Reese Davis and Adam Baird, it's an all new second row as well. you got to love having uh, Adam Baird there. Even though he doesn't get appreciated that much outside Wales, I certainly appreciate that guy's ability to stop them all. And then uh, veteran Dan Lydiot 
is there at number six alongside Tommy Riffle, who um, with that kind of high work rate tackling game is going to have some pressure on him from that man Jack Morgan last week. I mean, Jack Morgan brought something else to the game in terms of bloody not only high work rate tackling, but also big old ball carrying. So, yeah, a bit of pressure on Riffle to have a big game. And then uh, Tane Plumtree, who got his Wales first cap from the bench last week, gets a start at number eight. So it's been a astronomical rise for him from a guy here in NZ who couldn't quite crack the blue starting 15 to start in the test for Wales. Thomas Williams is there at nine, up from the bench alongside Owen Williams at 10. And there's also another Williams at 15 and another Williams on the bench. So you got four Williamses in the squad. So that's quite a commentator's curse, isn't it? But yeah, uh, it's an all new 9-10 combo with those two guys. Um, the 10 question is a bit of a... I mean, Costello played pretty well last week. Ran the show pretty well. And then you got Dan Bigger, who was on the bench last week and this week. So yeah, it's a, it's a wee bit of a question mark. Nick Tompkins is there in the midfield at 12 alongside Joe Roberts who will get his first cap at international level, so congratulations to him. Not that encouraging, though, when one of the first things your coach says about you when asked in the press conference is he's got a big ass. That's what Gatlin said, and he said that's a good thing for a midfielder. Okay. So he's got a big left boot as well, which is uh, good because the other kickers in the team are all right-footers, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, Tom Rogers, he's an elusive run on the left wing, and then... Uh, Josh Adams also, I think, bringing up, was it a milestone cap for him too? But um, yeah, Mr. Consistent and Josh Adams pleased for him there. And then uh, Liam Williams is there at 15. So man, like how many of these guys? It was just Thomas Williams and Tim Plumtree, I think, in the starting 15 were the only two who were even in the 23 last week and both of them from the bench. Uh, Sam Perry, Kelmsley Matthias and uh, Dylan Lewis come in on the bench as your front row replacements. Matthias is getting his first cap, so another congratulations. Chiunza is there in the 19 jumper. Um, Gats did mention that he could potentially cover lock or loose forward on this game, depending how things pan out. Tane Basham, another kind of tackling machine. You guys breed him in Wales, is there in the number 20 jumper. And then Kieran Hardy, Dan Bigger, and another debutant, Kieran Williams. On the bench, apparently Gareth Anscombe took a knock to his thumb while they were in Turkey. That's why we haven't seen him just yet. Another candidate for that 10 jersey. Um, Stats-wise, last week, England, very, very hard to watch. Frustrating just in terms of how much ball they dropped. 24 turnovers conceded is the most I have seen in a very, very long time. I can't recall seeing a game quite that bad. Uh, and no tries. A wee bit concerning, but hopefully they've shaken off a bit of rust. Also, their line-out was only 10 from 15, so they will need to be better this week, Will England. I mean, with Itoje, with Laws, and with Jamie George coming in to run that line-out, one would hope it will be much improved from last week. Um, for Wales, their line-out, on the other hand, was at 100%. And uh, they managed seven clean breaks, which for Wales in recent times is a lot. They've not been able to kind of genuate the, generate those genuine kind of X-factor chances that much uh, in recent times. But they managed it, which was very, very pleasing to see. And they tackled at 90%. So lots of kind of good storylines there from Wales. But um, hard to read too much into it from just it being that one kind of game in isolation. Both teams coming out of a long period in off-season. Um, as I mentioned, it was 20 points to 9 last week. Um, but... Wales' record in England in recent times is not great, although they did get close back in 2022 when it was 23-19. Um, that being said, the bookies are saying a pretty big-time England win, 14 points. 14 points, so a double-score win for the English, according to the bookies. Not quite so confident for the rugby forecast algorithm. It says 8 points. Nika Amusha Kelly, the Georgian, is the ref. It's from Twickenham. At 5.30, I believe, local time, which makes it 4.30 in the morning here in New Zealand, which is a heck of a lot better than the 2.15 for the Scotland-France game last week. If you are an English fan, or not an English fan, but just fancy yourself some England rugby gear, check out England Rugby Store. They have loads of gear, but otherwise, you guys let us know your thoughts on this one. How do you reckon it's going to go? England Rugby Store, link down in the description, affiliate of the channel, buy some rugby gear before the Rugby World Cup. But anyway... You guys let us know your thoughts and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See ya.